together. But for instance, in the case of the Scott sisters, they produced a couple of uh, Marion Ord found much of the Scott sisters' work in the basement of the Australian Museum back in the uh, 1970s, late 1970s. And she produced two books, and I've got a copy of them in my bag actually, um, that look at the flora and the, um, the ornitho ornithological work mm. of the, the region. And um, so over many years now, the, they've been trying to rehabilitate Ash Island and they've used that book as uh, the resource to identify the species that were found there. Without that, there's very little to identify what would have been found. So a lot of these uh, early illustrations are now being used to uh, re-establish uh, particular plant communities around the region. And um, I think that's really important. Um, I'm involved in a project at the moment that's um, mm. uh, called the Flora of the Hunter. And the Flora of the Hunter project is being funded by the University Foundation. And I'll just pass this around. This is just an example. This is um, what we're doing is producing a body of books on illustrated books for the first time of hunter endemic species. There's never been a publication. Most of the publications on Australian flora come out of the Sydney region. Mm -hmm. Newcastle is quite a, a, a different area. It's where the northern flora and the southern flora meet, so it's got some interesting species. So what we've done is we've got a number of illustrators working on um, illustrating uh, the plants, and there's a text being put together by a, a, a fellow from Environment and Life Sciences. He's a botanist. He's putting the text together, and this will be published hopefully by the end of the year and have the first volume out. Now, this particular species um, is a, an undescribed species. So there are many undescribed species in the collection of the first volume that we're doing. There'll be about six that either haven't been found in the hunting before or who or haven't been described by science. So uh, while coal mining is now such an integral part of the community of the, the hunter, we're now down to some of these plants that might have six individual plants left. Mm. And uh, so we think it's important to, uh, to make people aware that mm. these things still exist. So mm. the traditional illustration techniques that were done 200 years ago are still being done here today mm. and will be used as an, a, a, a way of letting mm. people have a volume of work that mm. will be able to show what's actually here in the hunter. Yeah. Another one of my students is doing a project on Ludwig Leichhardt. Um, last year his, was his 200th birthday, um, and a group of people from the University of Queensland finally translated his diary. The, his letters were uh, translated some years ago mm. by a French uh, Arousseau. Ma Marcel Arousseau behind you. Yes, Arousseau. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we had a lot of information from his letters, but his diaries have actually been published. Mm -hmm. So one of my PhD students has identified all of the plants from the Hunter region and the area around here. He's not known for his botanical work, but he mm -hmm. uh, did a lot of uh, work in, in the botanical field. He collected specimens. Many of those specimens are in museums around Australia and internationally. Mm -hmm. So she's located where all of the specimens are. Mm -hmm. She's been to uh, Europe. She's a, the, the curators in the, in the museums there have been very kind to allow her to photograph those. Mm -hmm. um, there is a big part of his collection in Melbourne. And she's creating a body of work for her PhD on illustrating Ludwig Leichhardt's found specimens. Mm -hmm. So it'll be the first time mm -hmm. that the science of Ludwig Leichhardt, the, the, the journal uh, entries, the diary entries, mm -hmm. and the specimens will come together mm -hmm. in one body of work. Mm -hmm. So you know, the sort of work that our students are doing is really, um, a tra I guess, a, another transition from the sort of work mm -hmm. that we see in front of us. The importance of the handmade, the importance of the um, aesthetic the importance of the information, the, the little hidden messages that are, that are there. You know, the once upon a time the illuminated manuscript would have had lapis lazuli. Mm -hmm. You know, because that was a, a really precious stone. It would have been ground into a pigment and it would have been used to, to
to mm. you know tell a, another layer of complexity to mm. the story. Yeah. Um, the gold, the silver, mm. the, the the hatching, the, the little icons mm. that you find along the way. Those stories that illustrators tell are really critical to mm. understanding who and what we are yeah. and where we come from and all of those little things that you've seen. Is, you could pour over each illustration mm. for an hour and, and discover mm. a, new, a new little story mm. along the way. So, you know, I think the joy of illustration is something that we really need to hang on to because mm. a photograph can't do it. Um, you know, the digitisation of the world can preserve it to some extent, but are we going to be able to retrieve this in mm. another hundred years' time? Like mm. If we were having this same discussion, you know, in a hundred years from now, uh, without the artefact, we have nothing. Mm. You know, we have a screen, maybe, with something mm. on it, if we're lucky to be able to get the archive mm. back. Mm. Um, so uh, these things are critical to mm. our history. And, and what we are and they should be a celebration of mm. the times that they came from. Yeah, that thing that you said about Ash Island is so crucial because if you see pictures of what Ash Island looked after when you know the un industries had finished with it, it looked like Afghanistan yeah. under the yeah. Taliban, yeah. barren. And it's amazing that the inspiration from these botanical drawings that were done by two young yeah. girls who yeah. were not able to get a university degree at that time, university education wasn't part of them, but they were world class, they were able to actually bring those plants and animals back to life. These things are like cultural arts. That's what we've really got to emphasise. You know, a lot of people just think illustration is some sort of dainty pursuit, but it's really a way of preserving um, life in a way. So it's it's quite a it, it's, it was quite a powerful sort of idea. I think the other thing is with illustration as well. Um, when you draw an object, you get to know it. Um, you can look at an object through a photograph and you can see it and you can say, yeah, that's an object and I recognise it for what it is, but you never know it. When you draw something, you pull it apart. As an illustrator, I pull things apart. So I've got a plant and I pull it apart and I, I will dissect a flower and I'll understand what it's doing and how, it, how it's constructed. So when I work with a scientist, I can say to a scientist, well, look, oh, this is what I found. No, you haven't. Yeah, this is what's... No, you haven't. That, that's not there. And there have many been many species described by illustrators because the scientists have never pulled them apart to see them. And now that taxonomy is no longer so highly um, practised in, in the sciences, we now use DNA. Many of the scientists wouldn't have ever seen the plant in the real world or the animal in the real world. They wouldn't know what it looked like. They would know it at a, at a you know, a, a cellular level, but they certainly wouldn't know it perhaps, mm -hmm. as it is in the bush, and you don't know those associations. So the how one plant lives with another and a, an animal or a bird or a, an insect interacts with that community is critical in our understanding of how we should grow food. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't have the right pollinators on the right plant, we don't have food, mm -hmm. we die. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we don't understand and we don't really value um, necessarily those really careful looking at things that make us understand mm -hmm. the world that we live in and I think that's one of the lovely things that I'm very blessed to be able to do, not mm -hmm. as much as I'd like at the moment but mm -hmm. uh, will do again, uh, <laughs> is that looking and I mean as an archivist you do that, you look at everything, you can find the little holes in the page or the dits in the page and the little icons that reappear and, and come back to life. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's uh, something that we should do more often and I think um, you know it's lovely to see people interested in in these things and I hope that in Newcastle tomorrow you book down because <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Thank you.